Uh, okay, so now the next part of the slides are basically some information regarding Sumitomo Foundation. Uh, what is the mission, what is their objectives, uh, the types of grants that are available and so on. Now, uh, Sumitomo Foundation, uh, every year they give out around four different types of grants. Grant for, uh, grant for Japan related internet uh, research projects, grant for projects for protection, uh, preservation and restoration of cultural properties, grant for projects for uh, this one and so on. All right. Now, the only grant from Sumitomo that is eligible to all of us, okay, non-Japanese speakers, uh, is only this grant. Grant for Japan related research projects. This grant and this grant we are not allowed to apply. Okay, so these grants are basically more for uh, Asian researchers like us. All right, so now I'm going to go through with you uh, the mission for Sumitomo Foundation. Uh, so the mission is uh, to contribute to the betterment of human society. Uh, now at the end of the, uh, the day, the grant needs to fulfill, uh, to solve problems which confront humanity. So if you want to apply for this grant, you have to ensure that your end objective of your uh, grant paper helps to solve humanities issues. All right. Uh, now uh, this part here talks about uh, some basic information about uh, the foundation. So it's uh, established in 1991 by 20 different companies. All right. Okay. So uh, as mentioned, uh, they have one, two, three, four. Yeah, they have actually five different types of grant. The only grants that we could apply uh, is this grant for Japan related research projects by East and Southeast Asian researchers. Now, Excuse for. Me, yeah. Does that mean uh, uh -huh. the, the uh, sports humanity alert must it be related to Japan? The Japan related research projects? No, okay. It, it's not to say it must be related to Japan. It could be something that the Japanese say, well, I can learn something from it a bit of something related to Japan but not necessarily must be Japan it could be like uh, human resource in Japanese as well something related to them but not to entirely 100% so the respondent should be the Japanese no Malaysians as well you can do studies I'll give you an example you can study on on Japanese firms in Malaysia yeah how, how do they conduct their trainings for example you know, do they apply different methods in uh, training their staff? Is it different from in Japan? Yeah, so, something like this. So it's something related to Japan, but it's not entirely Japan as well. <laughs> okay, now the key thing about this uh, particular grant is that uh, your collaborators or your co-authors, uh, must you must not have any Japanese as your co-authors. Yeah, okay, non-Japanese, okay. Uh, it can be four or five collaborators up to you, uh, but non-Japanese, okay? You must be non-Japanese. All right, uh, now the general information are on the grant, uh, the purpose, uh, the eligibility, the language selection. Um, okay, maybe I just brief you on this part. Uh, okay, now the purpose for this Sumitomo Foundation grant, uh, the grant basically, their aim is to enhance the mutual understanding between Asian countries and Japan through uh, promoting research projects in the field of social science and humanities. So if your area is related to social science and humanities, humanities basically covers things like management, marketing, human resource, uh, anything, uh, operation management and so on, yeah, that's related to Japan, you can apply for this grant. Okay, so um, now if you ask me, uh, I was actually quite surprised because uh, last two years uh, we had another uh, Utah colleague that actually got this grant but she is from the Faculty of Science and her area, when I look at the title, it sounds to me like it's a science title but I found that her, though it's a science title, but the way she narrates the writing is like it's more towards the social science so you can do that as well Okay. Uh, so the eligibility, uh, eligibility is that uh, it must be carried out by an individual or a group uh, in the field of social science that are related to Japan. Uh, language of applicants, uh, you can apply in English or in Japanese. Uh, selection, okay, selection made by foundation is made by these people and so on. Now, he is the coordinator for Sumitomo Foundation and he flew all the way from Japan to come and say hi to me in Malaysia. 
So we got the opportunity, uh, we met up in Nico Hotel and I raised this question to him. I asked, so who are the people who actually uh, select the grant? Uh, is it the board of directors or is it you? He said no. Uh, for them, what they do is that they will compile all the application forms and they send to University of Tokyo. So it's the professors in Tokyo universities that approve the grants. All right. So, uh, so application period as usual is uh, from 1st to October. Okay. Uh, normally the duration for implementation is the following year. Uh, usually it's from April to March. Okay. But it could be extended again for another six months uh, if needed. But IPSR will never recommend you to extend because it doesn't look good. Okay, because if you fail in your project, it will reflect badly for the next batch of people who plans to apply. Yeah, so by whatever means you need to finish in that one year itself. Okay. Uh, now the grant budget basically is about uh, 55 million in total. Every year they'll give out around 70 projects. Sometimes 60, sometimes 80, it depends. Alright. Uh, it, you, uh, uh, Japanese, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the area of research, uh, yeah, again, is you can be carried out by individual or group in a field of social science or humanities that is related to Japan. Uh, now, the following projects are not eligible. Number one, research projects for profits or those uh, for profit making. Uh, contract research project for third party. Uh, project that has been substantially completed and grants is this is not scholarship or fellowship and so on. Alright. Uh, the type of research you either do it individually or collaborative. Okay? Uh, requirements. Now what you need at the end of the day, at the end of your submission is you need to acknowledge the source of fund when publishing or presenting your materials for this research. Uh, so in other words, if you attend a conference and this conference is related to the area of Sumitomo, you need to give an acknowledgement like, okay, before we begin, uh, this project is supported by Sumitomo Foundation grant under project number 09115 and so on, alright? And if you publish the paper as well, you need to put this in the acknowledgement section in your journal or in your conference, okay? Uh, so you can publish uh, based on your Kind of requirements. Uh, if you want to publish based on the books, you can do so. If you want to publish based on journals, you can do so. Uh, conference and so on. But minimum, what they need is at least one journal paper. Uh, whether you want to be ISI or non ISI, doesn't matter, but at least one paper. Okay, but uh, my judgment is if you have a grant, you should submit to ISI journals. Why? Because you have higher chance of getting your paper accepted. Usually, uh, top journals love people who submit with this grant because it helps to enhance their journal. Okay, let's say for example my journal, maybe my journal now is ISI. With this people submitting with a grant or prominent uh, researcher, I can upgrade my uh, journal paper to maybe to impact factor journal in the future. So it's good for me. So they will normally want to accept. So you have higher chance if you have a grant. Okay. Uh, the other thing is. Uh, Oh, you have to keep all your receipts uh, because they may audit your receipts uh, at the end of the day. Uh, now, for my case, it was very funny. The first time when I received the grant, uh, because nobody briefed me on how to apply the form and so on, so when they asked me to fill out the bank, uh, bank account number, I actually include my own bank account number. Alright, so when I received the money, I informed IPSA, hey, they have banked in the money. IPSA said, hey, you cannot collect the money. You need to redraw the money and pass it back to them. So I wrote them a check and passed back the money to them. It's very funny. But anyway. So the bank account number should be IPSR? Yes, IPSR number. Now, if you have any grants, okay, uh, whether it's international grants or whether it's Utah IF grant or whether it's a Malaysian grant, all money must be parked under IPSR. Okay, so IPSR will, okay, before you utilize the money, you have to ask permission from IPSR. Uh, it's really, yeah, I can't say that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit, uh, there's a lot of procedures that are involved, uh, alright, but it's not so messy anyway. Uh, okay, the qualifications uh, for applicants, uh, gain number one, it must be an Asian researcher, must be non-Japanese, uh, you must live outside of Japan during the grant period. Uh, you have to take re 
responsibility for your research project uh, and so on. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you uh, on my first application in 2009, just to give you a, a feel of what this document is all about. is quite standard every year, uh, it's almost the same. Uh, the first part is usually uh, your subject of research. So this was my first title. Is this the end of Japanese HRM in Malaysia? A case study on the impact of global recession on labor management among the Japanese subsidiaries in Malaysia. Now, uh, if some of you ask me, how did I got this idea to write? I seriously, I have no idea. It's just that my boss at the time said, hey, you apply for this grant now, okay? Nobody applied before. Uh, so you give it a try. Uh, and when I look at the area of Japanese, uh, what kind of things is this? I, what I did was I download all those journals that has relation with Japan, okay? And I asked myself a very simple question. Uh, this particular journal, they did a research in Japan. Can this be implemented from the Malaysian perspective? And I was thinking for a very long time and yeah, it does make sense that it's possible. So what I did was I tried to gather more of this information and then I shuffle all this and I make it to, from the Malaysian perspective. So to me, uh, yeah, this research is something which I have no idea but it's possible uh, because uh, if you want to do it, I think it's possible. Alright, so uh, applicants, uh, your name, okay, your basic information. Uh, so yeah. So the grant amount that you you need to fill up the amount first. Okay, the amount is uh, my my safest bet is try to put as high as possible. But the amount that you're gonna put in must be reasonable. Okay, it must make sense and it must adhere to IPSR guidelines. IPSR guidelines basically means like for example traveling allowance. Sorry, traveling sixty cents. Okay, you cannot put seventy cents per km. For example. Okay, you have to follow 60 cents. If the hotel rate is 200 per night, you can't put 400 a night. So you need to be reasonable as well. Okay, so uh, this is the research duration. Now the logic of why the logic of why you need to put as high as possible is because usually the grant uh, officer what they do is that they will slash the amount. So it's always good to have check up the amount so that when they slash, it's still. Yeah, at least you have some money to do your research. Okay, so uh, this is basically your CV. You need to fill this out. Um, your applicant's view of research. Okay, now if you have noticed, <coughs> when I apply for this grant, okay, I'm really fresh. Okay, really, really fresh. I have zero publication, not even a journal paper, not even a conference paper, really zero. And I don't even know what is this thing called grant all about. So someone tell, someone told me this, it's very hard for you to obtain an international grant if you have no, you know, no papers to support you. People will not give you an opportunity because they don't trust that you can accomplish this grant. So to me, uh, well, you may have people who will have this kind of mindset, okay, but my style is, not not lie ah. Not not lie means ah, I just go straight and do. I don't care what other people say. So you just give it a try. Okay, you never know at the end of the day whether people like your grant. If they like, they will give you the grant. Okay, so just give it a try. Don't feel uh, you know skeptical about if you have no publications and so on. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, since this is an external grant. Yes. Oh, because you are working under Utah. Okay, you apply this under an institution. So you are still part of Utah. So but what happened that we, we applied through uh, this movie to the foundation? And you don't report. They approved all the things. Uh -huh. They already approved the, all, all the things. But the, at the IPSR, they hang on on that because what? No, they, they usually, IPSR will never hang on this. What they will delay is your claim. 
But for I mean claim in the sense that uh, the money will be there, IPSI will receive the money. Sometimes the applications, the procedures can be very lengthy. Don't apply this, you gotta get somebody to sign and then we ship the money off to you. Look, it takes some time but they but they have improved a lot. Okay, for last the last time round I think yeah the next day you submit, I think the next day they will approve it. Really, really very efficient now. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you still have to park this under IPSI because you belong to New Town. Um, Alright, so. Time belongs to you, huh? Because just now you're mentioning that. Uh, okay, it's just like an example. Publish that time, everything must be, must be acknowledged. This will be also. It, it's just like, like I give you an example. If you are doing consultation work, okay, consultation work, you're doing consultation work for someone else. Okay, but because you're still a Utah staff, you still have to pay that 10% to Utah. That kind of concept. 